Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. I'm Damon Campbell with HotNewHipHop.com here at Portage Theater in Chicago with a very special guest. Would you like to introduce yourself? I'm not that special, man. I, I've been on here a few times. Motherfuckers know me. Oh, they smell they smell the weed and they know what's up, man. So, I mean, Jet Life, the most thing important. My name right now is Canal Street Confidential. Hell yeah. So it's not really about anything else except Canal Street Confidential, December 4th. That's, that's what this is. Totally. Good to meet you, man. Definitely appreciate your time. Uh, now, I understand Slick Rick was one of the first artists who kind of inspired you to pursue rap, but yeah. did, did that have anything to do with the fact that uh, you also had to wear an eye patch for a period of time growing up? <laughs> well, no, but when I had to wear the eye patch, I wasn't tripping because Slick Rick had the eye patch. Okay. That was part of the reason why I didn't really cry about it, you know what I'm saying? I was cool with wearing yeah. a, a patch to school because pirates were cool. And fucking Slick Rick was cool, so it was alright. Like, how old were you at the time when you said? I feel like I was in the second or third grade. I was old enough to be concerned with what girls would say yeah. about my eye patch, but I was young enough not really to give a shit yeah. what girls would say about my eye patch, so I just went to school. Because you had, like, bumped into a jewelry case or I, something? Yeah, I ran, I ran face first into a display case oh, gosh. in a department store in the mall, running from my sister. I don't even know what she was going to do to me if she <laughs> caught me, but Probably not I know she wasn't going to do that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I should have just dealt with whatever she had for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, you've certainly made your fair share of decisions over the years that people didn't necessarily understand or agree with at the time so how important is it would you say to you know always trust your own vision yeah well i mean if you're gonna if you're gonna be your own boss or anything then you gotta trust your own vision and everybody who made a move at some point uh seemed crazy yeah to people i always talk about master p you know how crazy he had the sound and the friend sitting in the cali to tell people like all right Everybody going to have gold chains, it's going to have a tank with a dude driving it, it's going to have diamond wheels, and I'm going to sell 75 million records and the whole world going to go crazy. Everybody going to say, uh, right. you know, that sounds like fucking madness, but that's yeah. exactly how that went. For All sure. fucking cash money or anybody, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I guess it helps to have some structure, though, because, for example, didn't uh, Styles P teach you how to count bars when you rap? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never, I, people tried... I've had everybody try to show me methods on how to count bars. I usually just rap till I kind of feel like the hook should be there. Yeah. And then I stop, but Styles gave me a little method on how to count them. So, Pretty much just yeah, winging it before that. Yeah, that's when we started doing, uh, when we did First 28. Okay. Yeah, he put me on game right because that's when he realized it. Because I was like, yo, <laughs> just lay your, fir lay your verse first, and I'm going to just make my verse the same size as yours. <laughs> yeah. He was like, huh? Yeah. I was like, Leo first, and I'm going to make mine the same size as yours. He was like, no, man. Like, you got to learn how to come. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, it's crazy how things add up when you're really following your heart. Like, would you agree that that's the best way to find happiness is to yeah, always man, do what you want to do mean, in life? If you believe in the universe, you believe in a higher power, and you know that things work on fate. And if you step out on fate and you bust moves, then it's got no choice but to give you a return if you believe. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. For all the weed I smoke and all the shit I do, <laughs> I feel like I got a decent relationship with God. I don't go to church, but we talk a lot. <laughs> okay. He knows, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, fair enough. You know? And the fact that I believe in you know I mean? and stepped out in, in situations where people thought I was crazy and was like, I'm going to just build my own joint. Blase blind make these moves, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He had to kind of make good on it because because <laughs> right. I did it yeah. on faith that it will work. Kind of meet you halfway type it, thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got, but that's if you if you believe that much, then you could do it. That's like like walking out. Somebody tell you, you know, step across this, you can make it. You're not gonna do it, but if you do it, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. You move, you step, you step out, it's going to have to hold you, you know? Totally. It's real. Yeah. And, and I believe in something real, so. Totally. So now I, I got some real things that don't even really matter to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What's really important is just taking care of family and everything, but that's really what my initial move was, and now it's just in the abundance and every day. Uh, it's just like the universe find ways to... To, to impress me even more yeah you know and i know i know that none of my struggling or nothing that i was doing was ignored you right know what i'm saying like 
for everything that I had to do, like it, it's all it's all coming to fruition. So yeah, I know what the grind is, you know. I have heard you say a few times before though that keeping it all the way G is a pay cut in this industry. Can you elaborate? This is true, because you gotta look at it this way: you keeping it all the way hundred. Me, I'm not gonna get caught up in the the, the waves and, and sways of music and the, right. way, the way music goes right now. Everybody starts sounding the same because yeah. they want to emulate one person's success. Once they see somebody go platinum, then instead of trying to be independent of that sound, come up with something else to to go platinum too. They think that the way to do it is to emulate the, that exact thing. Yeah, that's why you got everybody looking alike, sounding like you know. It's just that's not it. What yeah. really what really would work, I think, is the formula from before in the nineties when everybody was trying to come with a different thing. That's why you had like gangster rap, you had tribe called quest, you had so many different facets and styles because every the the market would get saturated and you had to find another way to break through right. to get it, but people don't don't get it right now. You yeah. Know, I think originality is the most important, but it's a pay cut because once but now now that we've allowed the system to be run that way to yeah. where it's got to be a cookie cutter thing you got to have this kind of song and all that to make moves right you got people like me and countless others who refuse to play that game yeah. but because you don't play that game you're not gonna make that money right like i don't have you know like now right now this is my first time you know just coming into a radio single yeah you know what i'm saying and it just so happened that it, it happened out of nowhere because that was all my homies organically you know what i'm saying and it just happened to work you know yeah. what i'm saying but but it did that but 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 maintaining my own sound and trying to be my own my, my, my own machine yeah for so long has kept me out of certain brackets but we in there now so, so yeah and your career has been more of a slow burn to where you know even despite all your success uh you're still typically considered to be more of an underground artist for the yeah, most well, part that's, that's really all i really want yeah Honestly, that's all I want because they're the most the most faithful. I'm an underground music listener myself. You know yeah. I, mean? I don't listen to mainstream music, you know. I, and it's not that it's not good, but a lot of it sounds the same. And when in anything that you ever really like, you know, you got to go through something to find. Yeah. It. So if you're getting online and you're researching, you're finding some artists and it's sacred to you because you had to find it and you kind of want to protect that are the sound and you don't want them to get into that mix and yeah. get all watery you know what I'm exactly. saying but I'm, I'm going to prove this rip that you could do it this is just the underground coming above to take a piss in the mainstream. Exactly. So we'll, be well, all right. well, and kind of on that note uh, I guess it's kind of appropriate since you actually fell into a sewer as a youngster Huh? Oh, wow, man. I did. You know a lot of stuff. I did. I fell in the manhole, like the, the Ninja Turtle thing, <laughs> in the French Quarter once. Um, How deep was it? I don't know. I was little. Oh, yeah. My pops got me out of there, so I think he, like, he was, He just reached down there and yeah. got me out of there, but that was nuts. My mom had a full-on panic attack. Yeah. yeah. I didn't have to go to the hospital. She did. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> did she really have to? Yeah. They had, wow. They had to, they had to, that is they had crazy. To calm her down. <laughs> yeah. Because she thought she lost me, but wow. I was in the cut chilling. And I was underground from day one. Huh? <laughs> exactly. I was trying to tell you how we was gonna do this, you know. <laughs> and uh, speaking of sewage, is it also true that you used to actually flush your brother's weed down the toilet growing That's up? That's absolutely true too, because. I was just, I was big into D.A.R.E. Okay. Officer Friendly had came to my school too, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I had just got on this big kick about trying to protect my, my friends and family from drugs, wow. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm like, weed is drugs. <laughs> so you leave it around me, I'm going to flush it. If you got a beer or something, I kick it over. Yeah. And now I'm fucking <laughs> Captain Weed. Exactly. And I, I mean, shit, y'all seen it. I know y'all might have seen it. I fucking sent it to you for this interview. My mom fucking put me in front of a million dollars worth of weed and took a picture of me as a baby. Wow. As a, as a, yo, CJ, reach me my phone. I think it's in that phone. Um, this is nuts. So I am think my mom, my mom did this. Honestly, you know what I'm saying? We're all products of our parents. Absolutely. And my mom absolutely put this whole situation <laughs> together. It's all, she, it's all her. Uh, she definitely made <laughs> she she definitely brought me to the underground music scene as a baby, and she put me in front of a million dollars 
word to fucking smoke like, as a kid. So you know, there we go. We can do this. We can conduct this while I search. Okay, Sorry for sure. Just roll to the next one. Totally. Just nail this shit. Man. Absolutely. Um, and even nowadays, you're one of the you know main people kind of raising awareness about the toxicity of blunts as opposed to joints. Yeah, man. Well, okay. There's no Surgeon General warning. Yeah. On um, blunt on uh, fucking papers. If yeah. You buy a pack of blunts. You know what I'm saying? There's a big one in the bottle. Uh, concern whether smoking it might cause blah 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 just that and the third yeah. you look at a pack of papers any brand not even gonna plug any companies that I fuck with more than the other ones but <laughs> if you look at any pack of papers yeah. it's not no certain general one it'll just right. tell you how many papers is in the box yeah. and plus like I always said if you just do the math you know what I'm saying you get a pack of blunts what's that five for five bucks yeah you buy a pack of papers for a buck a buck 99 it's what 32 sheets sometimes 50 sheets a lot more efficient all right you know what you yeah. want to do and uh i understand it was actually somebody like putting mufflers on your old school to give you your first pack of zigzags back in the yeah, day yeah man yeah man terry's muffler back uh in Harahan, he was helping me fix my uh, my six four, my, wow. my first sixty four that went under in the flood. The one I had to sell that I talk about on the intro to Power Talk Three. Yeah. Um, he uh, when I, I had I got strep throat, smoking blunts. And, Even um, got taken to like ir urgent doctor, care. Yeah, my doctor. I went to urgent care. Yep, I went to urgent care, and the doctor was like, "You got strep throat." And if you find another way to smoke, then that would be, you know, your best move. Yeah. So I was telling my homeboy about it, and he was like, man, you got to smoke these zigzags. <laughs> yeah. And I had been turning them down, you know, just because I had only seen smoking, like, from my brother and shit. So I was yeah. like, you got to be in these switchers, but it didn't have to be. Right. And once I smoked the paper and I really tasted the weed and all, my whole life was, <laughs> was changed. Yeah, man. absolutely. And, uh, you know... For most people, so many pictures. <laughs> Any luck so far? Or mm. Getting warmer? I just see hella low riders and <laughs> all sorts stuff of good I stuff. I probably can't really talk about. Yeah. <laughs> I see my dogs and shit. <laughs> I don't know. I see bulldogs, Ferraris, Lamborghinis, low riders. Uh, I'm going to get that, man. Okay. Just roll through yeah, the Yeah, yeah, we'll keep man. going. I'm just going to nail this, man. I'm here, man. Absolutely. I'm here, man. H N H H, man. Let's do this. Man. You know, for <laughs> for most people, you know, weed seems to help take some of the weight off of their shoulders. Whereas for you, in the early going, it would literally make your shoulders go completely numb. Yes, man. Back in the game, <laughs> when I first really started smoking that kale, that real shit. Yeah. My shoulders, my it was my left shoulder every time. Okay. I don't know why. That's how I knew. That's how I would know if the weed was good. I was like, yeah, yep, yeah. yep, yep. That's it right there. I can't feel my fucking arm. I remember that all the time, man. The Not madness, so much nowadays, though. Mad, nah, it never happens. No okay. More, man. But that was like when when that real, real, real kill first hit. Yeah. That shit took a toll on my body, man. <laughs> and that, that's what it would do. Yeah. Not not the drug. When it got really scientific when it got to when when it, when when we found all that shit yeah that's when it went crazy and what's crazy is that that shit probably been around yeah that's the madness the shit probably been around man <laughs> And it's often said to be an unlocking tool, despite so many people still getting locked up for it, unfortunately. Well, yeah. Well, physical True. locked. Yeah, yeah, Mental. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Mentally <laughs> unlocked. Because in the DNA shape, there's a missing block, and THC is exactly what fits. Wow. The molecule THC is is what fits into what's missing wow. in our joints. So, you know, that's you crazy. gotta find the right strain for you. Yeah. And then it will, you know, make you a super saint. <laughs> exactly. I don't watch that cartoon, but people always tweet it to me. <laughs> so I read that word all the time. And it's got to be something awesome. Yeah. So fucking, uh, yeah, the right one. Will okay. Do that. And, and that, that's when your hair glows orange. And I think you could throw fire and. I don't know. I saw the one dude. He went crazy. He was chasing this praying mantis looking thing all over the planet. I don't know. But yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, find the right strain. Yeah. And uh, I understand your career may have taken a completely different path if uh, Daryl hadn't gotten locked up. Who's Daryl? From down the street. Who's Daryl? 
Tell me about it. Wasn't it going to like put some money behind you when you first started out? Man, is, who is this dude, man? You wearing a wire? <laughs> no, Look, no, man. No. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Had, had Daryl not got in trouble, <laughs> I probably would have been doing music way earlier. Yeah, you yeah. You know what I'm saying? He was going to put some money. So let's talk about that. Yeah, he was a positive guy. Well, yeah, that's what I'm getting at. He was a positive at. guy from the street yeah. who was going to put some money behind me as a kid when yeah. I was thinking about making songs, man. But they fuck it up. <laughs> These niggas. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh but with Daryl was that around the time that you had the song about Daryl <laughs> they fucking up though <laughs> these niggas and they're dropping things or uh was that, yeah. <laughs> but was that around the time that you had the song about Mr. Wilson from Dennis That's the, the exact time. That's the exact time, man, when I wrote the Dennis <laughs> Menace song, man. Do you remember how any of it went at all by chance? No, but I know my homie had a harder line than me. Uh my homeboy Alfred said uh, uh, the closest thing. This this is how clean and 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 straight edge of kids we were. Uh, he said the closest thing, like drugs to him, is caffeine free coke. Okay. <laughs> so I don't know what what kind of what yeah, direction yeah. we went. We, <laughs> we weren't like we weren't like little baby gangsters at yeah, this point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cause didn't you end up like killing them or stabbing them or something in the song? In the song, not in real life, Mr. Wilson. No. Oh. No, maybe Alfred did. I don't know, man. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I don't know, bro. <laughs> uh, is there anything else you'd like people to know about currency? I'm a good guy. <laughs> I never went to CC Murder in jail uh, without the police knowledge. And Daryl uh, was definitely a pillar of the community. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I knew hip hop, man. Yo, let's, December 4th, Canal Street Confidential, man. That's what's really important, man. Real quick, since you mentioned Canal Street. Nah, no, nah, you tried to get all my No, 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 last question. Because you mentioned Canal Street. I understand you weren't too fond of making trips to Krauss growing up. Any particular yeah, reason? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was scared of that building. It was a, like a haunted department store that ended up being turned into luxury condominiums wow. that I lived in, too. So that was cool. But I imagine you must have some fond memories of Canal Street in order to name an album after it. Them. They turned it into a luxury condominium. Kind of okay. And I had plenty of fond memories <laughs> in that. On the roof, uh, poolside, on balconies, yeah, on couches and hallways and elevators. You know, but let's not talk about all that. Canal Street Confidential, December 4th. Watch out for this dude. <laughs> Yo, man, you're an artist. You got one foot in, and one foot in the game, one foot in the industry. This dude's gonna try to get you now. No, no, no. That's Watch not. out. Just this trying to dude, help people get to know you better. This dude, this dude may have on the wire. We don't know what kind of work he's doing. High new hip hop. I didn't know that y'all was working with the Jakes. Jet life. There you have it. Once again, I'm Damon Campbell. And yeah, I don't Curry care. Jake. Don't let the bandana fool you. What's your name? Damon Campbell. Damon Campbell. <laughs> Agent Campbell. <laughs> Officer Campbell. <laughs> Yep, post Thanks for all watching. That shit. Post it. Post all that shit.